like for instance, this gauntlet was derived from from the arm. Um, so when you can be smart about that, I mean, obviously it doesn't follow exactly the curvature of the arm. I, you know, used a bend deformer to kind of um, unfold it some, uh, but the, the mesh still matches up. Um, and what that means is, is then if I were to rig it so that this twisted with the arm, um, it, it, there would be a one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, same for like this holster matches up with the geometry and the leg. And then like the glove, it's the same as, as the hand, that sort of thing. And then even like this body armor right here, I derive from the shirt. Uh, I just, you know, selected some faces and extruded out and, and, and built it off of that. Um, so um, one mistake that I made was with this guy, um, modeling it like this. What you would want to do for anything that, that flows um, is you would want to do both for simming and rigging purposes, because if you model anything with curvature, that curvature gets embedded um, in, in the mesh. Um, oh. You wanna keep everything straight. Um, it's really easy to then get it posed into something using end cloth. This would be a prime example. Uh, where you would pin these verts with a transform constraint uh, and then sim this around the body and then it would just drape better, way better than anything that you could place. What you want to do is, put it base, is go over to effects and then go to in cloth and let's create in cloth. So like, okay, great. I've created it in cloth. Now I'm ready to make my wrinkles. Well, not really. It's gonna, bye. See you later. It, it does come pre-wired to, to react to um, gravity. Like it has a gravity field attached to it. So you don't need to worry about that. But what you do need to do is go in and then create a passive collider for all these guys. Um, and now when we run it, it will sim around it. Let's see if we got something a little better. Stop. So let's say we're fine with this um, for now. You can then duplicate it and then you've uh, baked all that in. But where it gets really interesting is when you start to use transform constraints. Um, so let me do this yet another time. Create a cloth. Create a passive collider. Let's go over here to nucleus. Set this. Let's just set it to 45. What I'm going to do is you can think about it like a uh, transform constraint will basically pin the clothing. Uh, so for instance, like if a character's holding a towel or let's say you have a cape, you can pin where the cape would attach to the character or let's say your character has like a mini skirt on or something, you could pin it around the waist. So if you go over to end constraint and then go down to transform constraint, you get that. So now when we run the sim, you know, it, it holds it. Then uh, things get really interesting when you animate transform constraint. So like for instance, uh, the original version of the bedspread, it was also a, or the, the comforter in the hero's room. Uh, in order to get buy off, you know, I needed to pose it. And so what I did was I imagined how, like he would jump out of bed, he would throw the, the comforter off of him Self, imagine what the arc of that would be. Uh, and so I animated uh, the transform constraint going in that arc. 
Uh, and then what you can do is you can also turn them off. So I imagined where he would have let go of the clothing. So let's do that or something similar. Let's turn on auto key. Uh, we'll keep just translation and rotation. You can also mess with scale with these guys and that will create wrinkles. Like if you twist and scale it, it'll mess up the surface and create wrinkles that way. Let's move it over here, here, like that. So. And then let's zoom in. Um, so let's say like right about here. Let's say right about here or so. Um, you want to just a binary on off. Uh, then you can go right here and then uh, key enable. And then where you want it to turn off. Just hit zero and that keys it to off. So then it's like you're letting go of the clothing. Like if you get really uh, creative about it, it's really, really powerful. That saved me a ton of time. And that's why I'm showing you guys this not so much the context of this class, if you do that, that'll set you apart from most modelers. Because honestly, I'm like the only or one of two modelers, uh, like in the, in, the, in the whole department, that knows how to use NCloth. Most modelers don't bother with this stuff. But if you're willing to experiment and to branch out, that will make you valuable because you will be different.